Hi, and welcome to the Fix the PC YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be building a computer from scratch using components that we've bought off the internet or in store, depending on where you've got them from. We're going to start off with a motherboard. And some people like to put the stuff in the case first before you do anything else, but I like to put the stuff onto the main board before we even put it in. So what we need to do to this motherboard before we put it in is put in the processor and the RAM. The processor I have here, a Phenom 2 AM3 processor. This motherboard is socket AM3 as it says on the description on the box. This is an AM3 processor. Here it is. That is all the power we're going to need in our computer and that is pretty powerful. It benches well. Okay, so we remove this. If you've bought a second hand processor, you might end up with some remains of thermal paste on the processor. You'll need to remove this with contact cleaners and bits of wood or any other kind of scraping device you can find. However, if you've got it new, all you need to do is put it in. The little arrow lines up with the other little arrow, which is on here, which tells us where we need to put it. First, we need to pull this lever up. This is the same on all AMD boards. Intel boards are a little bit different. However, I'm sure you'll be able to get around that. It says in user guide. All these motherboards have user guides with them and uh, that'll help you out a lot. So you slot the processor in the way it goes. It will only go in one way, don't worry. And then close the lever. That's our processor in. Now, the heat sink is incredibly important because without it, it burst into flames and there would be Armageddon and everything. And on the bottom is thermal paste in a pad form. So that dunks straight onto there. You can line it up either way you want to, but bear in mind that this lead has to go in the fan socket, which is on the top for me. So we put it in this way. And the opposite side to the lever is the one that we want to put in first. These hooks go onto the hooks on your motherboard right here. We put the hook on and put it down, hook it underneath and then you have the little lever, lift it up, bend it over and now that's locked in position. Next we must, must connect the fan and this only goes one way which will be pretty self-explanatory. Now that's in. So once you wrestle your memory sticks out of their packaging, they come out one by one. They all have this single slot in them, unless you've got SD RAM, which you shouldn't have because they're not manufactured anymore. It will have one slot. You align this slot on these RAM slots. So it can only go in one way. This slot goes at the top. If you have two sticks or one stick, in fact no, let's just say two sticks, then you see how they are banded, blue, black, blue, black, you want to put one in that blue slot and then the other in that blue slot, that just means that it kind of accesses it faster. So you clip those in, you push them down and these little white clips will uh, fire up into the side of it. Make sure that they do snap when you push them down, and make sure that these white tabs are definitely in on both sides. That is all of them. So, we have our processor, our RAM, four sticks. We don't have to have four sticks, don't forget. And our motherboard. Okay, now it is time for the case. This is where we're going to be storing all of our stuff. We start by unscrewing these two screws at the back. Usually they are just screws. This one's special and has nice thumb screws so I can take it out myself. Put your screws to one side. Then push back on the case until it shunts over and remove. Take your prepped motherboard. This is what we're going to be using and we need to screw it in here. Before we do, we need to put in the stoppers that's going to hold our motherboard onto the back. You may see there are little holes dotted along. So we look at our motherboard, we find which holes 
there's usually rows of three that go up and down and that is where we're going to be needing them. So usually your motherboards come with screws and stuff like this. We're going to be looking at the gold ones. You need to put the gold ones in the back. If you don't have a tool, you can just put them in with your fingers. And there we go. Those are all of the screws that I'm going to need. I only need six of them. You may need more or less, depending on what motherboard you have. Give them another quick tighten. Make sure they're fully in. And then we can place our motherboard against that. First, we need to put the back plate in. Easy enough. Take it out of its packaging. Place it against the back with the keyboard and mouse holes. They will be at the top. They are always at the top. And your speaker holes, which are these ones, at the bottom. Orientate it how the manual says. And it goes in the back. Like this, click, and then it goes. That is now in the back, ready for us to put our motherboard in. The springs are all on this side of me. Push it in to the left as you do this, and then screw it in. Sometimes your motherboard comes with the screws in the packet, so that should do that, otherwise it's kind of a little bit stupid. Um, or your case will have them. Otherwise you are looking for these types of screws. Then you put them in one by one. Okay, now that is the motherboard in place. We've screwed it in nice and tightly. Not too tight though, don't over tighten the screws so you break it, or, um, although it is pretty hard. Now what we need to do, it doesn't matter here from now on what order you do stuff in, but the next thing that I am going to do is put in my CD drives. This is what it looks like. This needs to go in the front and sits about here or there. If you refer to your case's guide, if you have one, then it will tell you how to put this in. Otherwise, you just do it the normal way. And if the front panel is removable, remove it like so. Now, what we first need to do is put it in here. So, we need to remove the plates that we're going to be using. These are all actually strapped onto the case, they're not screwed in or anything. And I think they're a little bit awkward. You do have to twist them and pull them back to get them out. So you get a metal plate. Then, you slide it in like so, so it goes back. We can tell how much we need to align it by, by getting back our front panel removing the plate that we need to use and we put it back on. Most of the stuff with front panels is push and clips and stuff like that. How I put the front back on is literally a few clicks and it's there. We need to align this so it is out in the front perfectly flush like that. Now we turn it around. On mine I have a specific lock function which is kind of cool. If I flick it to one side then it's already locked it and with my screwdriver it seems that I would screw it in. Like that. And then if you really want to, you don't have to, then you put your screws in the back. One, two, three, four. So I'm only going to put two screws in to my CD drive because A, you only really need to and B, I'm a little bit lazy and C, I only have two screws. So, we put the screws into the visible holes that you can see. So if you have chosen to put screws into the back panel, on the right panel, you will have two screws in or four screws in if you really want to. Make them alternate, so one below and one above. And, and now we need to put these front cables on. These front cables lead to the front panel of your case to stuff like power switch, reset switch, and USB and audio leads and all that kind of stuff. Now with my motherboard I have these clips these clips can go straight onto these cables to help you put them in the motherboard. 
<coughs> all of these have labels. Some of them don't matter which way round it is, some of them do. But the labels facing the outside, so HDD LED, hard drive LED, that's on the other side. Push that in. Power LED. And they were kind enough to provide a nice little speaker for us so we can hear it when it beeps, when it starts up. We can put these in the side little speaker. Now the advantage of having this means I don't have to do it on there now, which is where we're going to put it. So we line up which way round it goes and push it in. Sorted. Done. And now we are going to do the rest of the front panel cables, which includes audio lead, USB lead, and a firewire lead. So these are all labelled on your motherboard and they all go down the bottom in various sockets here. You'll be able to see this printed on the motherboard. It will say USB AC97 HD audio, depending on what you have. And you simply plug the connectors in. They'll only go in one way because one of the pins are blocked. Okay, now if you have an HD audio cable, you'll be left with this AC97 cable, left three. This is... Um, old version of audio so you can just leave that be. Now the rest you should all have plugged in already and you might already see we're starting to accumulate a little bit of mess here. The cables are kind of everywhere. So there are a couple of tricks you can do. I put them around the back and kind of neaten it up a bit and any other cables you may have <coughs> you may be able to use You may be able to use cable ties like this one. There are many around. You can get these pretty much anywhere. You can find them on the packaging that you have received. Okay, now I'm going to put in the hard drive, which is also in another anti-static bag. This goes in either that, 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 or that. And the orientation of these depends on your specific case. Mine are facing outwards like this and have these cute little trays to put them in. So I'm going to make use of these, otherwise they slot straight in and you screw them up. So on my specific caddy thing, the hard drive goes in vertically down and then you snap it into place on this. Otherwise, if you don't have this, they go in like that. <clears throat> they snap into place on this model. On yours they probably won't. And then you usually have screws going down the side. They're on your model, they may be facing forwards and you may have screws on either side. Don't forget to go in the back and screw in the other side if you want to. It's not vital, but I recommend it.